All right. Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to our session on PowerShell secret management. Um, my name is Sydney. I am a PM on the PowerShell team, um, and I'm so lucky to be joined today by Paul, um, who is an engineer on the PowerShell team, and in fact was the engineer um, who built uh, both secret management and secret store. So this session today is designed to be sort of a getting started guide to secret management and secret store. So we'll explain how each of these modules came to be, um, what the philosophy is behind them, why and when you may want to use them, and then just some basics how to get started um, and start configuring these modules. So if you are an advanced secret management user who's been following this project closely for the last year, um, or maybe even just after the session, you are feeling like an advanced user, um, I will note that Justin Grody also has an awesome session um, during the summit showing how to build your own extension vault. Um, I'm sure this will be a really great session, so that might be something to check out um, after this session. And with that, we'll get started. Um, so why did we create some secret management in the first place? Well, this project came to be based on some customer feedback that it's difficult to manage secrets securely in heterogeneous cloud environments that you all write advanced scripts which require multiple secrets and types of secrets, especially when orchestrating across different clouds. That today, custom code is required to securely manage secrets across platforms. And if you're developing in an environment with multiple developers using multiple platforms, that sharing code is very difficult. And of course, that this problem really matters because it is high stakes because of the security implications. You do not want those plain text passwords um, floating around in your scripts. In other words, we heard feedback over and over again that today's secret management landscape is complex. Um, that you all work in worlds with multiple developers um, who use multiple secret providers uh, and multiple secret types to orchestrate scripts that work across multiple applications, sometimes even moving across multiple clouds, um, and then this all happens across multiple platforms. So what did we do? So we created secret management as an abstraction layer in PowerShell, so that regardless of what platform you're developing on, what applications you're interacting with, um, what secret provider or secret type you're using, or what cloud or other platform you are on, you can use a single set of commandlets. So get secret, for example. Um, and we created this as a module in PowerShell that is compatible back to PowerShell 5.1. And this module is now GA and available in the PowerShell gallery. Um, in this module, we support five secret types shown here. So we support PS credentials, secure strings, strings, hash tables, and byte arrays. So you might be thinking, when would I use secret management? Why would this be useful to me? So here are some of the most compelling scenarios that we've heard from users. The first one is when you want to share a script across your org or maybe an open source, and you don't know the local platform or vault of all users. Previously, this cr created complex logic to determine the platform so that you knew the very specific and sometimes difficult ways to interact with um, a local vault, or maybe the local vault didn't even exist. This allows you to just use the get secret command and then leave the vault um, up to the end user. Um, maybe you want to run your deployment script in local test and prod with the change of only a single parameter. So each of these um, environments may have different secret vaults that they're interacting with. And so you don't want to have to go through and rearrange uh, or edit the script each time to change exactly how you interact with that particular vault provider since they're all different. Um, and instead, you can just use the get secret command um, at each call, um, each time you need a secret using vault, um, and then just update what the vault parameter is uh, at the top of your script. You may also want to move secrets from on-prem to the cloud, once again, with only the change of a SQL parameter. Um, migrating from on-prem to the cloud or across clouds is difficult as is, and so when we can abstract um, some of the changes across these different vaults, it makes the process a little bit simpler. Um, you may also want to change the back-end authentication method to meet specific security or organizational needs without needing to update all your scripts. So maybe you write scripts that are used across a number of different organizations, and each organization has different specific 
um, requirements or preferences for different vaults. And so you don't want to have to rewrite the script or adjust the script for each vault that that organization needs. And instead you can write a single script that uses get secret with the vault parameter and allow um, the back end authentication to be updated by each individual organization. And finally, we see secret management as sometimes just a convenience feature, which can allow users to simplify interactions with various vaults by only needing to learn a single set of commandlets. In other words, secret management is valuable in heterogeneous environments where you may want to separate the specifics of the vault from a common script which needs secrets. And with this, I'm gonna jump into our first demo and show you how to get started with secret management. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to want to do is install the secret management module. So you're gonna use install module. Um, the module is called Microsoft.PowerShell.SecretManagement. And as I mentioned, it's GA today available on the PowerShell gallery. I already have the module installed, so I'm not gonna run that, but I am going to run a get command call against the module name, Microsoft PowerShell Secret Management. to see the commandlet interface that we have to work with. Um, and so as you can see, um, we have a few types of commandlets. So we have um, our secret vault commandlets like register and unregister and get secret vault. And so this allows you to, as you guessed, register secret vaults, see which secret vaults you have registered and unregister secret vault. Um, we also have commandlets to get secrets, set secrets, which is also used to create secrets and update secrets remove secrets, and then get secret info, which shows you a list of the names of all the secrets you have. So to get started here, I'm gonna run get secret vault and see what comes. So since this is my first time using secret management, I don't have any secret vault registered by default. So get secret vault is going to return nothing. So the very first thing I'm going to need to do when I wanna start using secret management is decide which vault I want to use, install that vault and register it. So with that, but to jump back into the slides and talk a little bit more about the vault ecosystem design. So what I really want to emphasize is that the value of secret management comes from the vault ecosystem. Secret management becomes useful once you have um, at least one vault registered and oftentimes it becomes more valuable the more vaults we have in our ecosystem. Um, what are extension vaults? So extension vaults are just PowerShell modules with a particular structure. And they ship on the PowerShell gallery, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. Um, so uh, vaults, we, so secret management leaves the advanced key and authentication management up individual vaults. These are just a few things to keep in mind when looking at vaults. Um, and the vaults are owned and supported by vault owners um, and community users and published and distributed through the PowerShell gallery. Um, so you might be wondering, like, what are some examples of um, vault extensions today? So many of the common um, key providers that you already use already have community supported vaults available today on PowerShell Gallery. Um, and I can show you a few of those. Great, so if you're on PowerShell Gallery, we are using this tag secret management to distinguish modules which have that particular structure and implementation that allow you to interact with secret vaults through secret management. So we're gonna talk more about secret store and I'm gonna demo that one um, in just a second and then Paul is gonna um, dig into it a little bit more. Um, but we also have things like key pass, last pass, HashiCorp vault, keychain, one password, Chromium, um, and a number of others. Um, Azure Key Vault is another example of what an extension vault could be. And as I mentioned earlier, if you are interested in writing your own, um, we have some design information and examples on our GitHub site. And then also Ju uh, Justin Grody is gonna be talking more about that in his session. Um, so we're using that secret management tag to identify vaults on the PowerShell gallery. Um, and so this is just another view that you can see if you use the, rather go through the command line, use the find module command, you can use our tag filter secret management, and you're gonna see which vaults are available for you today. So with that, um, we'll just jump back into a demo and kind of show a little bit more on how to get started with these vaults. So this is where we left off, get secret call, 
um, bullet call. So I'm going to now install my first um, extension vault module. Um, so the one I'm going to use is Microsoft PowerShell Secret Store. And this is a vault that was created by the PowerShell team specifically for use in secret management. Um, it's a cross-platform vault um, available where PowerShell 7 is. Um, but for the sake of this demo, it really could be any of these extension vaults. I'm just using this one as an example. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do is install the module. And then um, since I've already done that, not going to run that, but I am going to register the secret vault, which is going to be the next step. So we have this register secret vault commandlet. I'm going to provide the module name. So in this case, it's Microsoft PowerShell secret store. And if now if I don't provide um, the a name um, for this, uh, the secret management is going to use the module name as the friendly name for the vault, but I'd prefer to use the friendly name. So I'm going to write secret store here. And then I am going to also um, use this um, default vault switch. And what this does is it allows me to not need to use um, the vault parameter when I'm making calls using the other commandlets. Uh, so this is just going to set it as my default vault. So once again, if I'm not using the vault parameter, it's going to know I want to use my secret store vault. With that, we have registered our first vault, our secret vault. So now let's run get secret vault and see that it's there. Very cool. Next command that, next command that I want to show is get secret info. And this is going to return um, a list of all the secrets that I've created. Um, their name, type, and where they're stored. So these are stored in my secret store. They're secure strings, and um, the name is foo in my secret. So I've already created these secrets, so they're available here for me um, to create. So if I want to create a new secret, I'm going to use the set secret commandlet. Um, provide this with a name. Um, it's so hard to come up with names, so we'll go with foo2. Um, it's going to prompt me if I don't provide a secret um, in the commandlet. Uh, and now I have another secret that's been added to my secret vault. Um, now, if I want to access these secrets, as in get the secret itself, I'm going to use the get secret commandlet. So if I run the get secret commandlet um, on foo2, it's going to return to me by default this secure string uh, secret, um, and if I need it as plain text, I can use the as plain text switch. Um, now, if I want to update one of these secrets, um, I can use the set secret commandlet as well. So I'll use set secret on um, foo2. Um, there we go. Now we can run that again and see that the secret has been updated. Um, the other command that you may want to use as secrets um, from time to time is remove secret. And so this is obviously going to remove your secret. Um, and this secret does, this command that does require a vault provided. And there we go. If I, I'll clear my screen, run get secret info again. And there you can see the foo secret is now gone. So with that, I want to show you um, one more example of how to use an extension vault with secret management. So this was an example of a local vault that I was using. So I also want to show an example with a remote vault. So the vault I'm going to use today is um, Azure Key Vault, just as an example of a remote vault. Um, so here you can see I've created this vault, my vault 324. Um, I already have an existing secret in here, my AZ secret. Um, and I've also already installed the um, module for this secret vault. So this um, secret vault extension is part of the AZ module, if you're familiar with that, um, or it's part of the AZ key vault module to be more specific. And it's available um, in any version of Azure key vault um, or az.keyvault 3.3.0 or above. So once you have that installed, so then we can also register the secret vault. So I'm going to do register secret vault um, module name. 
And this time it's going to be az dot key vault. I don't know why that's not showing up in the back search. Az dot key vault. There we go. Um, okay, I'm going to start again so that I can cut that more cleanly. So next, I'm going to register this secret vault, um, my Azure secret vault. So I'm going to use that register secret vault command again. Um, the module name az.keyvault. I'm going to name it. My friendly name is going to be azkv. And then this vault uses an additional parameter called vault parameters. So some vaults may use this um, parameter, some don't. In this case, um, Azure Key Vault asks that I provide the vault name as well as the subscription ID that I will be using. So with that, um, we now have a second um, vault registered. Um, you can see that my default vault is still secret store, but now I also have Azure Key Vault. Um, if I run get secret info, again, um, you'll see that now I also have my AZ secret returning um, here as well, and that I can get that secret And we can run this again as plain text if we want to see what it was. PowerShell rocks. Very cool. Um, so we can also create a new secret in Azure Key Vault with the set secret command lit again. Um, say my new secret with this vault, AZKV. Um, there we go. Um, and now if we come back up here, give this a little refresh, we will see that now I have this remotely created my new secret. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little taste of how to get started with secret management, how to use the um, commandlet interface with both an example of a local vault and a remote vault. So now, of course, um, I can get to my scripting and start using get secret inline in my scripts, um, specifying the vault I would like to use and updating that as necessary. Um, and so with that, um, I am going to pass things over to Paul. I'm going to reshare my screen. Let's go with that. Oh, great. Yeah, thank you, Sydney. Um, yeah, my name is Paul Higginbotham. I'm one of the developers on the PowerShell team. And I just want to spend a little bit of time talking uh, a little bit more about the PowerShell Secret Store Extension Vault module. So as uh, Sydney mentioned, it's an open source PowerShell module and it's, it's an extension vault for secret management um, uh, and created by uh, the PowerShell team, but also um, made open source. And so we have community involvement. Uh, it's a um, local store. So we decided to create it uh, because uh, secret management uh, is an orchestrator of extension vaults, and it doesn't come with any vaults at all. So if you install secret management uh, by itself, it really doesn't do anything until you uh, download and install and register a um, extension vault as uh, Sydney just showed. So uh, we decided to build uh, uh, our own uh, uh, extension vault called Secret Store, and it's designed to uh, store secrets locally. Um, and something that's fairly easy to use, you can install it and register it. Um, it doesn't require any extra accounts, you know, like for Azure or AWS accounts or anything like that. So you can just install it and play with secret management um, and just kind of see how it works, you know, using a uh, you know, fairly simple uh, local store that works uh, all, over all platforms that PowerShell supports. Um, the secret store uh, um, itself is configurable. It's designed to work interactively from the command line and, of course, uh, non-interactively for uh, automation, um, unattended you know, script use and for automation scenarios. Um, I also was going to say, um, uh, I was going to say one more thing there, but I can't remember what it is. But yeah, so it's designed to work interactively, but not interactively. Oh, I was going to mention that by default, um, the default configuration is set up so that uh, the secret store uh, does run interactively. Um, and so I think that's all we need to say at this slide. Next slide, please. 
Uh, yeah, so the secret store is configurable. So I just want to go talk a little bit more about how you can configure uh, the secret store. It has basically four uh, configuration options. The first is scope. Uh, and right now, um, there's only one uh, uh, configuration option available, and that's the current user. Um, eventually, we'll also want to support what we call um, all users or machine-wide scope, but that is not supported in the first version one release. So what current user uh, or, yeah, user scope means is that uh, when you ins install or configure the secret stores, it's um, configured for that specific user account, the current user account. Uh, and the secrets that are stored are stored in the current user account location. And uh, so each user account, when uh, it runs secret store, it will have its own uh, store on file so that secrets are specific to each user account. And are not, you can't really share secrets across different user accounts. They're, it's basically isolated to the current user. And again, uh, machine-wide scope is something we're looking at for the next version where you know, secrets could then be shared over uh, different accounts on the machine. Uh, the next uh, configuration option is authentication. Uh, oh, no, sorry, we just need to stay on that uh, same slide. Uh, the next authentication uh, yeah, option is uh, you can uh, select uh, password authentication or no, uh, no password authentication. Basically, you don't require a password. And we can talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, another um, configuration option is interaction. Uh, you can set uh, uh, the interaction to be prompt. In other words, that uh, uh, when this, and what that means is that when the secret store, uh, if you have it uh, uh, configured so that it requires a password, and if you try to use the secret store and, and a password is needed, it will prompt the user for that password so it can be typed in. Uh, of course, that doesn't work well for uh, automation scenarios. So when you set interaction uh, to none, then um, when it requires a password, it will not prompt uh, the user uh, and instead throw a, a specific exception uh, that it can't access the store. The store is locked uh, and a password is required. Uh, and then the last uh, um, configuration option is password timeout. Uh, when you provide a password, uh, for the secret store, to unlock the secret store, that password will remain valid within that PowerShell session for a certain period of time, and that time is defined by the password timeout. By default, it's uh, set to 15 minutes. You can think of it like the sudo command in Linux. After that time has expired, uh, if you then try to access secrets in the store, um, uh, that will fail, and if prompting is allowed, if interaction is allowed, the secret store will prompt you for the password. You know, otherwise, it will throw an exception so that it cannot access the store. Um, uh, a couple of interesting things about the password uh, timeout is that you can set the value to zero, and that means that you know there's zero time timeout. That means that every time you um, need to access the store or secret management needs to access the store, um, you have to provide a password each time. Uh, and then on the opposite end of that, you can also set the password timeout to a value of negative one, and that means that the password remains in effect for the uh, uh, full uh, 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 lifetime of this PowerShell session. And that can be really handy uh, for unattended script, automation scripts, where you don't know how long it's going to run. Uh, you want to provide the password securely one time, um, and then after that, you don't want to have to do it again and just let the uh, automation script run and complete. Um, and then after that, uh, you want to terminate the PowerShell session because the uh, uh, the the secret store remains unlocked. Uh, the secrets uh, are accessible at that point. Uh, and just want to say also that you know by default the configuration is uh, to make it as secure as possible. So by default a password is required. Um, and also it was kind of set up for interactive use. So for by default conf configuration uh, the interaction is set to prompt. Uh, and then we move to the next uh, slide, please. I just want to mention also that Secret Store does support uh, users uh, defined secret metadata. Uh, all you know, Secret Store also has its own built-in uh, metadata, of course, and that's data that's associated with the secret that's stored. Uh, and of course, the basic built-in metadata is secret name, the secret data type, the vault name that's automatically stored. But uh, it also supports the secret management uh, user-defined metadata, so users can also provide. Uh, data as name value pairs as a hash table uh, that gets stored and associated with a secret as well. Um, and the hash table, the values, types that uh, the secret store 
supports is uh, string type or integer type or daytime type. Those three types are the only types it supports in the name value pair types. Um, I think that's all we need to say there. Next slide, please. So then uh, secrets are encrypted at rest. So uh, that means that the secrets, uh, when stored on file, they're encrypted. Um, the uh, and then they remain encrypted, you know, as they reside on file. And actually, as the secrets are read into memory, uh, they're read in uh, encrypted as well, and they actually remain encrypted well when, when they're in memory as well. And the only time that secrets are decrypted are when they are um, passed back to the user, you know, through a secret management command. Um, and then uh, the password configuration, if if uh, uh, the secret store is configured to require a password. That is, of course, the strongest protection. Uh, that means that um, those secrets are protected against any other user on the machine as long as, you know, the users don't have access to that password. So, you know, as long as the password isn't stored on the machine or somehow disclosed uh, to other users, um, that's the strongest protection for those secrets. Um, but secret store also does uh, allow you to turn that off and have it set, pa set the authentication to none, so there's basically no requirement for password. Um, in that case, um, uh, I should mention that the secrets are still encrypted uh, so that they're never stored in plain text on file and never uh, read into memory as plain text. They're still encrypted on file and when they're read into memory um, and only decrypted when, when pass passed back to the user. Um, however, the encryption key that's used to encrypt them is also stored on file. And so when you um, um, have the no password required option selected, uh, that's uh, less secure because really the only um, protection you have is operating system file system protection, right? So the encryption key is protected from other users uh, with normal privilege level. However, um, uh, higher uh, elevated privilege users you have full access to the file system and then you know can conceivably um, discover uh, uh, the encryption key and just and be able to uh, access the secrets so so obviously the no password um, configuration option is not as strong uh, security uh, protection as having a password required but that option is available uh, also should mention that circuit metadata is not encrypted uh, you know um, and so um, if you provide user metadata, you should not include sensitive data because it's not stored uh, as, as not considered uh, sensitive data and, and is not stored in an encrypted manner. Um, so you know, don't store sensitive data in the, meta, in the, in the secret metadata that's associated with the secret. Uh, if you do need to store uh, name value type data, the data that's you know, and then the form of name value pairs, uh, and it's sensitive and you need to store it securely, secret management does support that because one of the secret data types is a hash table. So if you do have uh, data that's name value pair and it's sensitive, you want to store it securely, store it as a secret. Don't store it as secret metadata. Um, and then finally, just mention that uh, uh, these files do have um, hashes created so that uh, uh, we do uh, uh, attempt to uh, and do, do um, uh, uh, file tampering, so we do check to make sure that the file has not been uh, tampered with. Um, uh, so that's just you know one other uh, uh, security measure that we do go through. So if uh, you know if a file gets deleted or if a file is somehow tampered with or modified in any way, um, that will be detected, and then um, the the um, the secret store is considered to be um, corrupted and, and and not usable at that point. And finally, I just want to mention that uh, this is all based on the .NET cryptography APIs, uh, which is uh, why we can do this cross-platform, because .NET works cross-platform, so Secret Store uh, works cross-platform. It doesn't use any OS-specific uh, APIs. Um, next uh, slide, please. So, uh, so the last thing I want to then talk about is just Secret Store and automation. I just want to talk about that because uh, when you start out, um, uh, by default, Secret Store is configured to be um, interactive, um, although we do want to be able to run it, obviously, uh, so, so that it's useful, uh, run it uh, as non-interactive in an automation scenario. But in order to do that, you'll need to 
reconfigure it, right? Because by default, it's configured for interaction. And uh, some of the commandlets, uh, I just want to mention, there's really just these five commandlets that are available in Secret Store for configuration. And the first one is a set Secret Store configuration commandlet. does what you expect. It sets all the four uh, configuration options. Um, the other one is uh, a set Secret Store password. That command is designed to uh, so that when uh, the Secret Store is um, configured for a password and the password is provided. Uh, and then you want to change the password, you want to roll it, whatever, uh, it'll change it for you. So you, you call that command, you, you give it the current password and you give it the new password that you want to change it to. Uh, reset Secret Store is actually kind of similar to Set Secret Store configuration, but it's kind of designed for a, a cat catastrophic problem. Um, what it does is basically deletes all of the secrets and resets the Secret Store to the beginning state. Uh, it also takes parameters so that you can set it to a default state or to any other or default configuration or to any other configuration you want. So it's actually very similar to set secret store configuration. And I'll show you that in just a minute in the demo. Um, but uh, the only caveat is that uh, if there are any secrets that already exist in the store, when you call reset secret store, those are all deleted. So you just have to be aware that when you use that, um, you have to be comfortable with uh, deleting any secrets that happen to be you know, in that store at the time. Uh, and then finally, is there's the unlock secret store, and that's what's used uh, when you don't have interaction, when you don't have prompting for the password. You pass a password uh, in uh, through the unlock uh, secret store command, and that unlocks the store. And again, the store remains unlocked for the uh, timeout period that you have set in the configuration uh, for, uh, yeah, for the password timeout. And then finally, of course, if you're in non-interactive mode, which you are in automation, if for some reason uh, you try to access the store and the password has not been provided or the password is um, timed out, it will throw the password required exception. It's a special exception type. Um, and so uh, that's one thing that you might um, need to know as you're writing your script. You might want to have a try catch or a trapped, you know, for that kind of exception because that means, you know, something that you can handle. That means that, yes, we need to provide the password in order to, you know, use these uh, secret management commands and you need to use the unlock secret store. Um, okay, so at that, I think I just want to go then to um, uh, a quick demo, and I just want to demonstrate a little bit some of the stuff I talk about uh, for the configuration, especially for configuring uh, for automation scenario. So I'm going to um, share my screen. Oop. Go back in it. So what I want to do here is... Um, uh, just kind of simulate, because um, uh, I want to talk about is uh, it's sort of like a, a CI scenario or you know a, um, a DevOps pipeline scenario where you want to set up uh, using script your um, uh, secret management or secret store and you want to uh, configure it to to run in non-interactive mode and, and and with password we want the you know that's the most secure um, uh, configuration and so uh, in order to do that. Um, I do to kind of simulate that is I just basically remove uh, the the directory that contains uh, the um, secrets you know for this account, uh, and then um, so so we're basically at the beginning. So even though I do have secret store and secret management um, installed right now, um, we can kind of just uh, pretend that uh, we have a we have a new um, uh, you know a DevOps image that's uh, pristine and everything, we have to install uh, all the stuff that we need. And then I won't go through it because actually um, um, in detail because Cine already went through this, but basically, uh, uh, you know, in your script, you're going to want to install the uh, uh, PowerShell, you know, secret management uh, um, uh, module, then you want to install the, the uh, uh, PowerShell secret store module, those are already installed right now. Uh, but the important thing then is uh, then you want to configure it right off the bat, right? So uh, I just want to mention um, the way that the secret store works is that the first time it's used, it, uh, uh, and if there's no configuration that's been set, uh, it will default to the uh, default con configuration, which is interactive configuration and password required. And that's something you don't want in automation scenario. So the first thing you want to do after you install the modules is to set uh, the secret store configuration. So I'll just clear that. 
And so we just go through this real quick. Yeah, set secret store configuration. Scope is current user. We talked about that. That's the only scope um, option that is um, uh, is pr uh, allowed now in version one. Um, authentication uh, is password. We want it to be as secure as possible. Uh, password, I want to set it to minus one. We talked about that. That means that when we set the password, it uh, remains in effect for the entire session. So this, you know, the script or whatever it can run, you don't have to worry about re, you know, reproviding the password. Interaction, again, is set to none because uh, we don't want any prompting. Uh, and then the password uh, is passed in. This is a, kind of the tricky part for automation scenarios. What I'm doing here is I'm using, uh, since this is on a Windows platform, I'm importing, uh, using the imports CLI XML, uh, which basically is importing the secure string from file. And the way it works on Windows, um, when you uh, um, export a secure string to a file, um, it it uh, autom sees that it's a secure string, secure string, and automatically, you know, the .NET API exports it in an encrypted form. So this is a secure way to uh, store the string on the on the file and then uh, re-import it uh, securely. Uh, again, that only works for Windows platforms because Windows leverages the uh, Data Protection API. Um, so that doesn't work for all platforms. So that, you know, so for some other ways that you might securely pass in a password in your automation script, um, it kind of depends. I know uh, a lot of CI pipelines, uh, DevOps pipelines, have ways to pass in read-only variables securely. Um, you might look at maybe passing in through an environment variable, and then, and then you have to kind of evaluate uh, whether it meets your security needs to pass it in. But in any case, one of the tricky things is that uh, when you set the secret store configuration, they have to provide the password for the secret store. You want to do that in, the, in a secure way. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, PowerShell, this set secret store configuration command line is high impact, so by default PowerShell will always prompt. You don't want to do that on your standalone or uh, unattended uh, script, automation script, so uh, you use the dash confirm um, parameter and set it to false. You know, no, I don't want any confirmation. So that you can run that. Now it's run, so right after that, next thing you need to do is um, call run the unlock. Again, we pass in the password. Now we're going to unlock it. Okay, so now the uh, secret store configuration has been uh, uh, configured. It's been unlocked. Um, you can then go ahead and uh, register it. Um, I've already registered it, so, but you can do it again. So, so now it's, it's been registered. Uh, and you can see that it's there, um, set to the default, and everything is running fine. If you do, you know, get secret info, it's nothing because it's a brand new image. There's there's nothing there, and then you can go about setting your secrets. That secret info gets secret, and you can do it as many times as you want because we set the password once, and the password remains in effect for the entire session. So that uh, uh, continues to 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 run. Uh, each time that you need to access secrets or, or manipulate secrets in any way. Uh, so one thing I want to talk real quickly again is, okay, so when would you use secret store? Uh, I'm sorry, reset, reset secret store. Um, and because it really basically does uh, kind of the same thing that uh, set secret store configuration does, except that if there's any state before that, it just erases it all. And so you probably want to use that um, in the case where you don't know what the state is of the image. Um, there might already be a uh, secret store ins installed for that account and configured. And if that's the case, uh, you may not know what the password is. Um, but um, uh, and so what you want to do is you want to just basically start from the beginning. You want to start uh, uh, from scratch. And you have to be comfortable with the fact that yeah, whatever's there is going to be erased. So I just kind of to emphasize that point, I just want to show that if you run this again, so we already have uh, Secret Store configured um, on this account, um, and, and we're just going to run the same um, Set Secret Store configuration again. So what we're basically saying is, okay, Set Secret Store configuration. Uh, I want to uh, set it to require a password. I want to provide the password. And if you run it, uh, you're going to get an error. It says, yes, the Microsoft Secret Store is already configured to require a password, and a new password cannot be added. You have to use Set Secret Store password to change it. So in other words, you know, there's already state. It's already been configured. Um, it won't just change it for you. 
um, if it's already configured with a password because that's not secure. So what you have to do is you, you have to um, do the reset secret store. Oops. Right, and then it gives you this big warning saying that uh, everything has been removed or will be removed. Um, and again, um, we'll just go through it real quick. If you look what we did, it's, it really just kind of mimics what we did with the set secret store configuration. Again, we can set the, the current user option. Again, the authentication, we want to set the password. Again, we're going to pass in the password from our um, encrypted file. Uh, password timeout is minus minus one. Secret interaction is none. Uh, and then of course force we we don't want any interaction any interaction or prompting so yeah so you run this um and then again you want to unlock it oops and you got secret um get secret store configuration so i forgot to do that before um you know of course you don't do that in script but of course we're this is interactive. We see that, yeah, of course, it's set up exactly how we wanted it. And if we wanted to get secret info, there's nothing there because we erased everything. So we're at the beginning again. We have to um, set secrets again and then and then go from there. Um, so that's all I wanted to show for that. And I just have one last slide where you can go back to that. Great. Yep, I'll share again. So I just want to make a quick mention to Windows Managed Accounts um, and uh, just basically say that currently for this release, version one release, uh, secret uh, Windows Managed Accounts uh, are not supported for secret management or secret store. Uh, and when I say managed account, that means uh, some service accounts, um, yeah, managed accounts, um, virtual accounts, those kind of things. Uh, currently don't work with secret managed. And there's a couple of reasons I want to discuss. Uh, well, before I get into that, I mean, we are looking to see how we might uh, work around that problem for a uh, 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 forthcoming release, but for version one, uh, it's not supported. But anyway, one of the reasons is that, um, again, um, secret store um, and secret management are, um, are, are set up uh, based on a current user account, and it requires a profile and uh, account location, and basically use the local local app data location to store um, configuration files and to store files and that sort of thing. And if that's not available, and it isn't on some of the Windows accounts, um, then secret management, secret storage just won't work. Uh, the second thing is that um, uh, secret management, secret store use, uses a uh, secure string, .NET secure string, which on Windows platforms uh, is tied to the data protection APIs. And data protection a APIs don't work for a number of reasons on uh, Windows managed accounts. So for those two reasons, um, uh, yeah, secret managed secret, or secret store are not supported on those accounts. And that's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, back to you, uh, Sydney. Awesome. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, that's such a great detailed look at Secret Store. Um, so I want to leave you all with some key takeaways um, that you can take away from this session. So the first thing um, is that Secret Management and Secret Store are generally available today on the PowerShell Gallery, and they are production ready. So the first takeaway is really a call to action. Go ahead and install these modules, try them out, and give us some feedback. Um, so what are some of our other takeaways? Um, PowerShell can help you manage your local and remote secrets in a unified way. Uh, PowerShell secret management is an extensible management plane that becomes useful from the Extension Vault ecosystem. That um, Extension Vault ecosystem is such a key part of the design of secret management. That Secret Store is an Extension Vault published by the PowerShell team, and it's supported in the same places as PowerShell 7. The Secret Store has configurations which allow you allow secret management to be used in automation, non-interactive settings, and that finally you can support and engage in the PowerShell engineering process through open source. This is a really key component that we didn't necessarily touch on very much throughout the presentation, but I still want to be a takeaway um, because I have to give um, a huge thank you to all of our community members who supported us throughout the development process of both of these modules, tried out our previews, gave us so much great feedback, and really allowed us to tailor the design 
modules to be most useful to your scenarios. And it doesn't stop here either. Um, we now that our we are GA reached our 1.0 release, we're still looking for more feedback um, so we can continue to iterate on these modules and really make them as useful as possible. So um, beyond this presentation, how can you stay engaged um, with this project? First of all, um, installing and trying out the modules and then reporting bugs, um, filing feature requests and getting support from us. The best way to directly interact with Paul and I is through our two GitHub repos. So if the issue is related to the secret management interface, those first commandlets we showed, definitely open an issue um, on our GitHub site at PowerShell Secret Management. Um, and if you're having any issues or have ideas for secret store, so that's more around the second set of commandlets um, that Paul showed um, with the configuration options and all of that, please do open an issue um, on our GitHub site at PowerShell Secret Store. And finally, I'll give a plug to our PowerShell team blog. Um, this can easily be found on any search engine if you just search PowerShell blog. Um, but we do really make a concerted effort to publish blogs every time we have releases for these modules and others. Um, you can also find on that site uh, a pretty detailed GA blog that covers many of the topics we discussed today. Um, it also will link you to um, our documentation and both of these repos. So that's a great place to go back and get more resources um, if you enjoy this presentation and have any questions. So with that, um, thank you so much. I hope you all have a really excellent PowerShell Summit and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all in person um, in 2022. Thanks everyone.